Greetings YouTube. The first thing I'd like to say is that one of my subscribers, Samwise7, has started an RPG channel, and I'm going to try really hard to remember to put a link in the doobly-doo. Okay, now on to the review. Today I'm going to talk about Necessary Evil for the Savaged World system. Now, first thing I want to say, this is a solid product, worth the price, if you're looking for a supervillain or slash superhero game. Um, this is going to do everything you need to do, it's going to deliver what it, what it said it's going to do, and you will be happy with its execution. Now is my confusion, because I'm not really sure why this product exists. The basic premise of this product is this. It's a focused supervillain game. In it, aliens have invaded Earth, and in doing so, they have either killed off, imprisoned, or neutralized all of the superheroes. Aliens show up, superheroes all rush out to take, take them on. Supervillains, of course, stay in their lairs and don't get killed by the aliens. So, suddenly, the supervillains find themselves in the role of protecting the planet Earth. Because if they don't get those aliens out of the way, there's not going to be time for them to bicker amongst themselves and decide who gets to run the, the entire planet. Which is really what supervillains want to do now, isn't it? Yes, it's very reminiscent of uh, Miller's Wanted, the graphic novel. Novel has nothing to do with Wanted, the movie. Do not confuse the two. Um, they're both good, but in com for completely different reasons. And the graphic novel Wanted deals with supervillains that have divided up the world. And you would have to see that as the ultimate result of this product right here, because if the supervillains succeed in driving off the aliens, that's what's going to happen. They're going to start bickering amongst each other about five seconds after the last alien's butt is kicked. Now, the reason I say I'm confused about this is that, to me, this premise that I've just told you is an elevator pitch. It's a, it's a pitch that you throw at somebody between floors in an elevator to get their attention and hope you can sell an idea to them. It isn't what you base an entire game around. To me, you would have been better off creating a superhero role-playing game for the Savage World system and then had this be a module. Because at least, I don't know, it's like 25-30% of this book is adventure at the end that deals with the alien invasion and everything. Um, only about 25% of it or so is about the actual rules for... Uh, or I can be more than that, maybe like 40% of the book is about rules of actually creating supervillains or superheroes. I mean, it's, you can make anything you want to. It doesn't have to be a supervillain. Um, and it just seems to me it would have been better off as a module to a superhero game. For example, Mutants and Mastermind is a superhero game based on the D20 open gaming license. And it's I love the game, and I think it's one of the best iterations of the uh, D20 license. It's just a solid um, set of mechanics, and I think it's really well presented. But there are is there almost no flavor to it. It is just the rules for creating superheroes. And then there are all kinds of supplements to that game. Stuff for the film noir kind of stuff, you know, uh, stuff for the, the golden age, the silver age, the iron age, uh, the high school super teams. Um, there was one for the wild cards, series of novels, which is excellent, both the series of novels and the Mutants and Mastermind uh, supplement. It's very well done. Um, and all of these supplements play off of the main book, so they don't have to cover the same ground that the main book did. They're just additional information, some new abilities, things focused about the topic they're written about. Um, and I think that's what this would have been a better product if it had been just a focused book about just that idea of supervillains having to defend the planet. Um, another thing about this that was kind of interesting is that the Atlanteans play a role in, in this uh, adventure concept. Um, they've come up from the ocean and they're involved in the whole fighting off the aliens as well. And I think it's interesting that, that at least, you know, I've never seen Ad Ad Atlanteans. So where have they been? Why have they not interacted in the past? Why are they now interested kind of thing? I thought that was kind of cool. And I don't think, I think this is flexible enough that you could, for example, 
You wouldn't necessarily have to have it set in our time or the near future. You could set it in the area of during World War II. The aliens come, kick the, the allies' buns, the Axis is left in charge, and now the Axis has to decide. Do we find some kind of peace with the aliens? Do we fight them off? And if they win, you have a world where the Axis are now the winners. And again, what do they do with each other? Um, it's a good product. I like it. Um, I'm glad I have it. I'm using it as a reference for a project that I'm working on uh, of my own. Oh, actually, with some with some other people, I'm just helping. I, I am. It's not my project, I should say. And overall, it's it's a good thing. And um, if you like superhero supervillains and you like the Savage World engine, this is the game that will do everything you need to do in the superhero genre. So you know, thumbs up.